Hey guys, Red here from Workstat BMW only. We specialize in BMW Automotive and Rolls Royce. And today we're gonna be doing oil filter stand gasket and oil cooler seal on an E60 530XI. So right now I'm gonna show you all the tools we need. We definitely need this, most importantly. You don't wanna use a regular oil, oil filter tool for any other car. The brand is AST V410. You can get this from Amazon. It's not very expensive. And you need a 21 millimeter right here. It could be a wrench or just a regular socket. Uh, we need the swivel with the Torx. I have a special eight millimeter that can actually remove Torx. So yeah, we're good on that area. An extension. You're gonna need a T30 socket, a six millimeter to remove the hose clamp, and hose clamp pliers if you don't want to lose as much coolant. Because if you're gonna do this in your garage, you're gonna lose a lot of coolant when you try to disconnect the upper radiator hose. I have a pry tool just to pry on some stuff. We're gonna need a pick to remove the old gasket. I have a 90 degree and then slightly angled. And here's the parts that we're gonna replace. Here's the part number and here's the other one. So let's get to the video. So just a reminder to do the oil filter stand gasket or oil filter housing gasket, whatever you wanna call it. I want to remind you guys that you're gonna be losing liquids while doing this kind of job. You're gonna be losing oil and coolant. So if you wanna do it in a garage, just try to make sure, just be re a responsible mechanic, I guess. Uh, put a drain fan underneath the car. And yeah, let's get on with the video. The first step would be to make some space for your work area and we gotta remove the T30 Torx around this front support. So We're just gonna move this on the side. Let's put this on the side. Put this hose clamp plier onto the upper hose so that way you don't leak as much coolant. What I do is I just grab this pick, turn it that way. Now it's open. Spray a little bit of WD-40. You can just pull this by hand. Once it's out, just make sure you have the O-ring still intact and this plastic piece which has a taper and I slide it back in so I don't lose two of them so we're fine I'm not worried about spilling coolant on the belt since I will be replacing the belt on this car if you don't want to replace the belt on your car I would cover it with a plastic bag not with a paper towel because paper towel would get soaked and it would still get onto your belt so the next step would be to get a six millimeter socket and to loosen the other hose. Then to loosen it up just good enough so we can get access to the hose. I like to open it just a little bit and then spray some WD-40. Okay, you are gonna lose coolant again. I would open the oil filter cap next. So you just put the special tool and 21 millimeter, loosen it up. I control the rotation for now. Sometimes it'll spill the oil right away. I wait for it just a little bit and then now we're good. If you guys notice, the 
oil filter is yellow, it's because I just did the oil change on it. So we're gonna keep the oil filter. And the next step would be to disconnect the oil pressure switch, which I already did, but I will show you where that connector is. So for the connector for the oil pressure switch is this guy. It goes in like this. And then you, there's other two connectors. I have the car taken apart because there's a bigger job behind it. <laughs> so you just press onto this metal clip downward and then just pull. Just press this one and then pull. Remove this one. I always remove this one first because if you loosen the other two, it's really hard to get to them. That one E10 at the very bottom. Remove this one. I always remove this one first because if you loosen the other two, it's really hard to get to them. That one E10 at the very bottom. You can actually remove it by just rotating it with your fingers. And I still keep them tight so that way the bolt comes out straight. If you loosen this one or this, it will get crooked and you'll hate yourself. <laughs> by the way, this is the shortest E10 bolt that goes uh, into the cylinder head. There's three of them. This is the longest one and then this is gonna be a second longest one and this is the shortest one which goes in here. So right now I have the intake manifold out. The reason why I have the swivel is because you can do this without removing the intake manifold. But I have the intake manifold out because I have one problem with the car. The cylinder head bolt snap right, right here. And it's made out of aluminum. And then there's more of them in here and in here. That's why I have everything taken apart. But anyway, let's go ahead and remove this E10 in the back corner. This is how I position my extension and the swivel it's going to be pretty similar it's pretty tight so just be aware so this is the last one again it's pretty tight so. You are going to lose coolant. It's going to be dripping on the floor. Just grab a paper towel. Don't make a mess. So now we're going to break clean the cylinder head. And we're going to get rid of the old rubber marks or the residue or whatever you want to call it. Now we're going to use a scotch bright to clean this surface where the oil was soaking up the gasket. Uh, if you're doing this in the garage, just ask your mom if you... I'm pretty sure every household has one. So. The reason why I'm cleaning it is you don't want any uneven surface on the cylinder head especially when you're putting a brand new oil, fil oil filter gasket in there. So. Now, we need the E12. Here's what I do. Put it on like that. Third one. Right here, it comes apart. Clean this area, remove the old gasket. See, it's pretty flat. 
I always take it off from this top portion. Is that the top or the bottom? I believe it's the bottom. It's your old one. We gotta clean this area. You see where the gasket kind of dried up a little bit. And this is the oil cooler side. There we go. Spray some brake cleaner. Put this on a bench grinder with a wire brush. And more brake cleaner and some scotch bright in between. Just work your way. Make sure it's spotless. Now it's clean, so we'll move on to the next one. Right now, I'm gonna explain why I use this to clean the cylinder head and why I use a steel wool to clean the actual oil filter housing. Well, this one I can mold it to a shape that I want and it's really coarse depending on some really old gasket and they just dry up everywhere. And the pick will remove it, but I find this one, I end up using this one better also on this side. So if it's really bad, grab something sharp and thin like a pick and just scrape the walls make sure it's spotless spray with brake cleaner and then after this you see there's some steel wool stuck inside and I'm not worried about that one because I'm gonna brake clean it and then blow it with air make sure it's spotless before you put it back in the car just put the gasket Uh, there is a guide this Circular guide goes in here this goes in there. Put it on my hand We'll torque it later. It's kind of tricky to put this back with the intake manifold on there. You can use a magnet to drive it in. Leave both of them loose and then we'll work with the hardest one which is at the bottom. Just go like this. I give it a little bit of slack so it goes in. You see? If you go like this, it's hard to put back, but if you push it backward, it goes in easy. The torque specification for all of them is 22 Newton meters. So let's go ahead and torque it. Okay, we're good. And this one is really hard to torque get to spec. What I do is I just tighten it by feel. Make sure it's tight. 
Don't forget about this one. We're gonna torque the E12. There's three of them. One at the bottom, one right here, right here. It's uh, 16 Newton meters. I torque it while it's on the car. It's a lot easier. This is why I use the inch and a half extension. If it, you have a three inch, it's too long. It'll hit the fan. Otherwise, you'll have to remove the fan. To remove the small E10, there's two or three different ways of removing it. One is to remove this guy, but they always break and you end up replacing it. And this hose goes to the thermostat. Uh, I avoid doing that. So what I do is I buy a special tool to remove this E10. So option number one, you can get a ratcheting, eight millimeter so you can fit it in there and to loosen it up and then to tighten it clean it before removing the screw if you're gonna use this because sometimes if it's soaked or caked in oil you can strip it so to save the headache I use this to loosen it because it's a perfect shape for the e torques not many companies sell this uh, ratcheting E torques. Uh, this is what I use to loosen it up because this can give you a big headache. So, yeah. So, the next step is to connect the oil pressure switch. I'm not going to connect it right now, but just don't forget to connect it back. And then you can go ahead and connect your coolant hoses. So now I'm gonna pour oil into the oil filter housing itself. The reason why I wanna do that is I wanna help the rod bearings when I first crank the motor because when you remove it, clean everything, it's gonna take a few seconds or a second for the oil to get to the rod bearings and all the oil channels. So just pour like half a quart. Anyway, we just, did an oil change, so we're good. Once you did that, just put it back. Use the tool. There is a torque specification in here. If you guys want to ask me what's the torque specification, I know it's upside down, but on your car, it should be written down in there. I just tighten it by hand, make sure it's tight. <laughs> and don't pinch the O-ring. The main reason why I added 0.5 quarts of oil into the oil filter housing before putting the cap is because as soon as you remove it, there's going to be like half a quart in there, and then you're going to lose that. 0.4 you're gonna drain it into your drain pan or whatever container so to, You just want to give the same amount of oil the car had before you don't want to lose oil and then coolant and you also need to top off the coolant, but still I'm Working on the car. I still have both cam gears out the Vanuses uh, I'll I'll top it off later. Don't worry so the main reason we do this is the cylinder head and the oil filter housing they have a gasket in between and over time heat wear and tear the heat cycle the gasket dries up so what happens you end up leaking oil into your belt and then your belt gets saturated with oil and you don't want that so worst case scenario if you leave this at 60,000 miles or 65 or 70,000 miles Pop the hood, take a look in between if there's oil soaked in there, and then also check your belt. If it's really soaked in oil, 
your belt will slip off your belt tensioner and it's gonna go inside your front main seal because you have the crank pulley in there and there's no protection plate in between the crank pulley and the front main seal unlike in an M54 or an S65 the crank pulley has ridges and then a protective plate behind so on this one I'll show you guys what it looks like so if you see your belt is soaked in oil like that that means you got to change the belt and you can also get a squealing noise and if it snaps your battery light is going to turn on and you'll be stranded on the road that's how you do an oil filter stand gasket on a 530xi let us know in the comments if you want me to do another oil filter stand gasket or something similar spark plugs slightly different if you work on a turbocharged engine this is much simpler uh, like comment and subscribe so yeah we'll see you guys next time